the computer. There you go. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this Q&A about the upcoming uh, challenge. So uh, Leon and myself uh, will kind of start with describing the challenge based on you know the idea behind it, uh, the previous experience behind it, and uh, kind of what it's all about. And then we will be just here to uh, answer any of your questions. So, you know, before we begin, so uh, you know me, most of you know me, and uh, some of you know Leanne, uh, some don't. She's kind of our, she's actually a client at NET. <laughs> so she comes, trains just like you do. And when I originally did this challenge, kind of created it a couple years ago, we did it with another group, um, like an executive <laughs> uh, medical uh, company in, you know, in financial core and we had such an amazing results and I thought you know we, we should do it again and then when I wanted to do it again I was chatting with Leanne and she kind of uh, offered her help and we did it this past time with her kind of supervising as a nutritionist and it worked uh, really 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 well like she was there to you know help people not just with kind of micros and stuff but as well as you know so much you know, detail in terms of, you know, fiber and all those things that I don't know anything about, basically, but very personalized. And she'll, she'll kind of describe her role in it herself. Um, so, yeah, let's go kind of talk about the challenge a little bit. The, you know, the idea behind this challenge is, yes, there's kind of, you know, the one is very simple one. We want to lose fat. And we want to lose fat. We don't want to use lose muscle, which is, you know, fairly actually hard to do, particularly once, you know, you're not young anymore. And the, the second um, objective of, of this metabolic reset is that, is like metabolic reset. Because what, what the reset is going to do is going to kind of make your cells sensitive again to nutrients, to, you know, to, to sugars, to carbs, to just neutrals in general, to proteins, amino acids, and so on. It will turn on some of your longevity pathways, uh, there are kind of three main pathways or the upstream of seems to be most of the hallmarks of longevity. And, you know, when we we're designing this program, we were keeping in mind trying to, you know, activating those pathways on pretty much daily basis. Um, you know, you expect better the challenge lose quite a bit of fat. You know, when we did last time, what, 15 people did it and pretty much everybody who uh, reported the results, told us they lost, you know, at least 10 to 20 pounds of fat. Those who measured their body composition also reported that they pretty much didn't lose any muscle. Some said actually they gained some muscle, which is great, which is, you know, not easy to do. And that's one of the unique uh, features of this specific challenge is that, or reset, is that we will target your fat, not muscle, not lean tissue. Because otherwise, if you just you know, do conventional calorie restriction of some form of another. Uh, if you don't do strength training, if you don't do increase your protein, what's going to happen that between 10 to 50% of total weight might come from lean tissue, which is, you know, undesirable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what else? So fat loss, maintain lean tissue muscle, activating, activating longevity pathways, make us sensitive to the nutrients again, you know, standard stuff, lowering insulin, uh, lowering the chronic inflammation. Um, when we did it a couple of years ago, we tested our blood work. We tested, uh, we did the stress test, you know, on, on the bike and the, in the treadmill. Uh, this challenge also showed that it decreased uh, rest and heart rate in people, it improved VO2 max, and, you know, decreased risk of cardiovascular disease, and this goes on and on and on. So the, the, the benefits of this challenge is again, yes, you're gonna look better by the end of its completion, you know, in terms of uh just losing fat, but it's it's much more. It's kind of giving our body, you know, a little break from the comfort from all the calories that we be consuming and challenging it a little uh, and resetting our metabolism. And in fact, you will notice how by the end of maybe day seven or so, more or less, depends on person to person. You, you're going to be a different person. You're going to feel different. You're going to have uh, different energy. 
mentally you're going to feel different like you will be different and then as the challenge advances deeper and deeper uh you will feel better and better and better and by the end of it you will you'll be surprised how you know how great basically you feel and we have uh quite a few clients who did it and when i talk to them pretty much all of them continuing some form of another of this challenge what they've learned mm -hmm. in the you know five six weeks so it does work uh I'm, I'm really really excited that you you know brave enough to at least listen to this q a uh and then hopefully do the challenge and you know from here maybe I'll let, uh, leanne uh, introduce yourself and explain you know, Hi, everyone. I'm Leanne. Nice to meet you. Can everyone hear me? Yeah? Okay, great. So um, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I have a background in competitive swimming. And after university, I became a certified coach and I taught an elite swim team in Audleysville, Switzerland for a while. And when I came back to Canada, I did an additional program. It was a six-week program on uh, cancer and it looked at diet and nutrition, but also the modalities that were available at the time. So there was a very strong focus on the immune system and everything anti-inflammatory. And at the time, we didn't have the information that we have today. We didn't have the nine pathways to aging that we now know have been shown to be proven through research. We didn't understand about the longevity genes and how we can activate them or not activate them and accelerate aging. So, but those principles still hold truth today. We just now have a sort of an explanation for why they do. So the reason I'm involved is because Andre's program is something that most people are missing is number one is the key component of, as we get older, every decade, we're gonna lose between six and eight pounds of muscle. If we're not doing some sort of resistance training if we're not eating the right amount of protein for our size. And so that's number one. And you don't need me to lose weight. You don't need Andre to lose weight. You can just eat less calories, but that doesn't take into account that you're probably going to lose muscle. It doesn't take into account whether or not what you're eating is healthy or the right groups and the right amounts for you. So where I came into the program, Andre had already created it. He'd already been very successful with it. So what I kind of did was I took the macro nutrient groups and I just sort of cleaned up what I wanted for the protein. And then when we looked at the fats, you know, I'm looking at the essential fatty acids, the right ratio for you, which is anti-inflammatory. And we know now that inflammation is one of the major keys to preventing aging and disease. If you look at any disease or any illness, inflammation is one of the key components. So, um, so what I'm saying is the program's amazing. You would lose weight. Hopefully you will gain, you know, a little bit of protein, a little bit of muscle, if not maintain what you have. But my goal is that after the six weeks, you have a much bigger understanding of your health and longevity. You have a much better understanding about how to put those meals together when I'm long gone and you're just healthier overall. Right. So when we do the, you know, the resistance training you're already doing, I hope. And, you know, a little bit of intermittent fasting. So does, is anyone familiar with the longevity genes or no, and that's okay. Yamanaka. Pardon me? Yamanaka genes? The, the, the longevity genes. Um... Oh, I'm talking about sir uh, Chris. Oh, no, no, I thought you were talking Yamanaka about Yamanaka, factor. yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, and that's the thing, right? If we look back, we knew the things that helped with longevity and people would argue about, you know, which ones, but what we didn't have was the research that kind of showed, you know, the pathways, the biological pathways as to why they helped, you know, keep us healthy, why they helped with longevity and aging. So if you look at any of the, the blue zone groups of people who live longer, they're not just living longer, they're healthy. We don't, we want to live longer, but we want to be healthy while we're living, right? Or we don't want to live an extra 20 years and suffer and be in pain. We want to be healthy. So when we look at the research and we compare it to how those people live, we know that they're following a lot of the things that you need to do to create that healthy longevity. So part of what I added to the program is um, we have an app and everyone can, um, every day I will sort of, you know, 
send out little bits of information, but also my goal with this particular group is to sort of educate you guys about the nine pathways to aging and how to prevent it and tie that into the foods. So, you know, we're on this program, you'd be have a, at a you'd be having a higher content of fat because you want to be burning ketones. So the goal is to be flexible metabolically by the end of the six weeks, right? So that you can kind of smoothly go back and forth when you need to or want to. So that week six at the very end of the program, then we would have a conversation about whether you'd want to, how you incorporate those starchy carbohydrate, carbohydrates back into your diet, um, what your goals are, if you want to continue to lose weight, or if you wanted to, you know, um, gain some muscle, then we would look at how that would look for you. And so that's something we would cover towards the end. But at the beginning, um, it's about the right fats, the right ratios of omega three to six and nine, so that you're anti-inflammatory, and not just to lose weight, but not just to have fuel, but because your brain is more than 60% fat, all the nerve endings in your body are fat. So it's very, very important. Um, we want to lower cholesterol and triglycerides and blood pressure, um, insulin resistance go down, blood sugar to go down because your, your resting blood sugar is the number one indicator of your, your lifespan, right? So things like that will automatically happen on the program because of the intermittent fasting and also because of the healthy way you're eating. But we don't count calories. That's the beauty of it. So we give you the foods that you can eat and it's a great selection. And we just sort of, you know, guide you to have a higher fat content. We want more protein than an average. So it's not really, we're not labeling it keto or anything because keto would be a lower protein. We want to keep the protein up because we want to keep the muscle mass, right? And then we get into the, the low carb or people say no carb, but just to clarify that um, fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates. So there are carbohydrates in this. So if you never ate, just for the sake of argument, if you never ate a bread, a pasta, a rice, or anything like that ever again, you'd be fine. I'm not saying to do that. I'm just telling you that it's not essential because if you're having some fruits or vegetables or both, um, you're getting the carbohydrates, carbohydrates that you need. And what you're getting also are the ones that I selected are the lowest of the carbohydrates just to get you into that state. So you're burning ketones, but also because they also have um, some of the highest phytochemicals and phytochemicals are some of the compounds and foods that activate your longevity genes, those pathways, right? So, and the other thing you get when you do the program is you're activating them. So what happens is your cells start to um, rejuvenate, reuse, recycle, and actually get rid of, you know, dead cells or cells that are inflammatory. It helps clean everything out. So it's almost like a detox at the same time. So there's, there's really a lot that's, that's put into this, but everyone after about a week has more energy and feels better because their bodies, you know, using the ketones, there's no up and down with the, because if we have a, a, a high sugar meal, our blood sugar spikes, but if the higher it spikes, the more it crashes, right? It's like the law of physics, you know, what goes up comes down and the higher the spike up, the higher the spike down. So you won't have any of those issues and you become more satiated because when you're having enough protein, you're more satiated, okay? Has anyone ever done any kind of intermittent fasting or fasting in general? You just, good, okay. So um, my background, I did a full week water fast at the True North facility in Santa Rosa, California, a really long time ago when it was not cool to do it. <laughs> um, and I've done, you know, usually what I would do is once a year, I would do a three or four day one just pick a weekend or a time when I had some downtime. And it's, it's, you get an incredible amount of energy after I'm not telling everyone to run out and do it full stop. It's something that we, we ease into the program set up the way it is for a reason. Right. But um, it's also not something that I think anyone should be weary of or worried about unless you have, you know, obviously a health issue that we need to be aware of. So obviously, um, but Realistically, a 24 hour fast isn't really that you're not eating for 24 hours. It's really, you're just going from 
either a lunch until lunch the next day or dinner and dinner to the next day. So really you're only missing one meal. But what I want you guys to understand is that unless you have some sort of underlying health issue that prevents you from doing the program, when you're not eating, you're not automatically fasting. Your body's still digesting. Your body's still using up what's there. And then you want it to sort of activate and get into your cells and use the fat that you want to lose for fuel. So you're not starving. You're not harming yourself. It's actually a wonderful way to, to activate that, to get into those cells. Otherwise, you can't. Because if you're just eating constantly and your body's using the food that you're putting into your body constantly, it's never going to go into your fat cells and take that out. It doesn't need to. It's like if you walk into your home and you're looking for a spoon, well, you just go to the kitchen drawer and you open it and it's right there. You're not going to go looking in the attic. You're not going to go look in the basement in the storage room because you don't need to. The body is similar. It's going to do the easiest thing. And if you're constantly putting that in and not giving it a chance to, to utilize what's there, then it won't. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we normally do is I would send out forms that go over every system in your body and sort of, they sort of cover the, nu the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals, and it's sort of a checklist of any symptoms. So I get a baseline of kind of where I think you're at. And if I think that I should make a recommendation or two, just to respect everyone's privacy, I would send you a private message or anything else. If I see something on the forms, you know, health wise or otherwise, or if anyone has any restrictions or they eat a particular diet, if you're vegetarian or vegan or paleo, anything like that, or you have any allergies, then we can work with that as well. We, in the last group, we had someone who was paleo, we had someone who was pescatarian. So it can work with any um, diet. And that's the other nice thing is that you're not restricted to eat specific foods. So protein is, you know, we can work with protein. If you're vegetarian or vegan, then we have to play with the with the the amounts of protein a little bit just to make sure you're getting enough. It's a little bit can be a little bit more difficult, but it's certainly possible. So, does anyone have any questions? Maybe before we go to the questions, uh, Leon, let me maybe describe the program a little bit first. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. We haven't even talked what the program yeah. <laughs> looks like. So basically, uh, you know, we we throw in this word fasting, intermittent fasting. When we did this last time, that was actually the least of the concern in the end, uh, because during the first week, we fat adapted you. You're going to become fat adapted. So if something you look at it today and say, there's no way I can do this. Well, after we do this program for the first week, you're going to be different program. And, you know, Le Leanne and myself, we're going to support you in the way, you know, how much protein to eat fat, what fats, what to eat, what not to eat, because we have pretty rich experience in this area. And then once you fat adapted, literally you're going to be a different person. And then, you know, that fasting thing is actually going to be, you'll be surprised how easy it is. It's not that hard. I find that probably the most challenging part was for people last time, I think Leon might agree with me, is people were shocked how much protein we asked them to eat. So the protein, there is no negotiation. On this program, you know, we're going to ask, you're going to essentially going to eat two meals a day. Uh, I think it's five, six hours apart, right? We're gonna send a document describing week one, week two, week three, exactly the structure to it. And for women, each meal would have around 60 grams of protein and for guys, 70. So it's quite a bit. And the reason for it is because we're doing all this fasting, intermittent fasting, as I mentioned, we want you to prevent you losing muscle and it works. So, you know, don't compromise it. Protein is very important. And I found that probably was the most challenging part. First week or two, people were most people were not used to eating that much protein. And but once they figure it out, it gets you know gets kind of normal. Uh, so yeah, so the program is basically six week, week one, uh, making you fat adapted, week two and three, you know, cranking it up a notch, introducing additional 24 hour fast in our program, and week uh, four and five, two 24 hour fast. They don't have to be consecutive, so you don't have to fast for 48 hours, but just pick and choose two days that work for you. But by that time, you're already going to be fat burning machine. It's not going to be a big deal at, at all. And week six, as Leanne mentioned, we're already going to talk about you know, maintenance. And everybody is different at the end of the day. And, and at, at the end of the day, whatever you do has to work for you, right? And so this week, we're going to offer you different suggestions, different recommendations, 
how you can more or less maintain your gains and keep it there or keep going. And that's going to be the last week, kind of just more discussing, reintroducing carbs back into the, uh, you know, diet and figuring it out that works for you. So I just wanted to clarify it before we go mm. into the questions. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm, no one has the forms or anything or the description. Okay. So we would hand out, um, we would send you a very large file of, of recipes that would cover the fats, the good proteins and, and the carbohydrates, so the vegetables. And then in week six, when we talk about reintroducing, I would go over and sort of educate everyone on all the different whole grains, legumes and beans and things like that. And then you can sort of talk about your goals, whether, like I said, you wanted to continue um, with weight loss or you wanna just maintain and work on building more muscle or maintaining muscle, et cetera. Or if you have some sort of health issue that you wanna work on, then we can tier that towards um, that goal with more anti-inflammatory things that would support whatever it is that you're dealing with. Um, and so with the app that we have every day, I would send out tips and you all are on the app. And if you have questions, you just send it out to the group or if it's something sensitive you don't wanna talk about in the group, you just send it to me privately and I would message you back or I can answer in the group if I think it's something that's great for everyone, but obviously I wouldn't mention your name if it's something you didn't want, you know, um, with your name associated to it, that's fine as well. And it's a really good way to just, it kind of happens organically because we're all sort of, you know, asking questions, making comments, sharing. Sometimes we share things like a recipe or something that we've discovered. Or The interesting thing is that it's hard to explain if you're not doing it, but once you start using you know, fat for fuel and your blood sugar is stabilized and you have more energy, you're satiated. So I actually had a hard time sort of convincing people. People were like, can I do a three, can I do three day fasting? Can I do, you know, and I have to sort of say, no, like that's enough. We don't want you to lose muscle. So the two days was enough. And by week, you know, five, I had people sort of, you know, everyone was sort of saying, you know, I really don't want to eat the carbs. Obviously now there's a, there's a mix and people are eating the starchy carbs, but um, you just, what I'm saying is you lose that, that need. You don't have that same sort of, um, overwhelming desire to, because your body's not depending on that. So you, you're actually, you're, you're actually much more stable in that state because you're not doing the swing. So does, does anyone have any particular questions about the program or anything that I've said in particular, or? Anthony? Yeah. So I just, so basically you're sending us out this meal plan. We've got the app that connects us to you for with questions. So, and, and sorry, Anthony, I should mention, we forgot to mention that. So once a week we do an hour zoom. There we go. We okay. can talk about, so we can talk about progress, any questions, whatever you guys, you know, if there's something in particular you want to discuss, if not, I'll bring up certain things to sort of educate okay. and carry it along. Absolutely. Sorry, I apologize. I thought that everyone received sort of the outline of the program. No, we didn't say that yet. I didn't want to scare people off. I thought this time. <laughs> so I kind of jumped in. I just thought you all had that already. I apologize. No, I okay. it yet. People yeah. haven't seen it. Yeah. And like, just to give you an idea, I don't have everything in front of me, but like, so I have charts and like all the phytochemicals and the foods that are associated with it, that, that activate your longevity genes and stuff like that. Or when we get to week six, you know, we go over all the whole grains and I, I give you sort of, you know, ac you know, the breakdown of what's in it, what's, what, what, which amino acids it's higher in, um, what it supports more, how you cook it, all things like that. So there's a lot of education that goes beyond um, just the six weeks. Right. Yeah. Does anyone uh, else? I think Alexandra asked something about quinoa, right? And other supposed to be healthy uh, carbs. Not during, did you did you type something in chat? I saw. Alexandra? You, Do you, you mean, oh, you a little, my only concern is like I I when I was I think I was in my early 30s and I worked with a naturopath who's in Toronto and she um she educated me about like a lot of different kind of grains, which I didn't used to eat before. And I don't eat them that much, but like 
some of the grains that are very high in like, I think B vitamins, like yes. the ones that have that are full grains, like they're not processed in any way. I'm just thinking like of millet and the other one, it's like sorghum, I think. And like just other ones are those, yeah. I don't have that list. So I, yeah. I don't know. So so it's amaranth. So I'm only like, amaranth and if you, if, if people after the program want to eat, you know, white bread, white rice, I'm certainly not, I'm, I'm not telling anyone what to do, but, but my point, my purpose is to have you leave the program healthier and more educated. So to your point, Alexandra, it's, we go over the quinoa, the oatmeal, the millet, the camu, the buckwheat. Oh, is, permitted on, is that permitted during this no, so it's not permitted during the six weeks um, okay. because oh, they're wow. starchier carbs and they would spike your glucose, oh, but wow. it's only for the six weeks. But that's why I was saying at the beginning is, so just to back up one second, so carbohydrates. So there's a lot of confusion because with proteins, we say protein and with, you know, fats are fats, but when we say no carbs, people get really confused. So Fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates. I, I'm all for whole grains as well, but during the, we're doing a reset. So it's just a six week reset. It doesn't mean so you're I, never- I guess no sweet potato. Week six, when we start to reincorporate, we've got sweet potatoes and yams and quinoa, all these amazing whole grains and foods that you learn from your naturopath. Good job. Okay. Um, but what I'm saying to you is when we're, when we're going to create metabolic flexibility, and reset, we have to have, we want to have that higher good fat content so that we're burning the ketones. And that allows us to do all of those amazing things that I talked about. It allows your body to do that. So the vegetables are carbohydrate carbohydrates as well. Just so right. very clear, right? I know you know Alexandra, but I'm just saying some people may not right. know. No, I was just, I didn't realize that we were not all like this is more intense than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So it's the protein, okay. all the good fats and nuts and seeds are in there and everything. Oh, so you, all you're really missing. Okay. What's not in the program is, you know, the starchy carbs. That's okay. all you're missing. So, and again, that might be painful for a few weeks. What I'm saying, what I'm just trying to explain is that rooms are okay. At week six. Oh, at the end, oh my gosh. Right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so are you, are you um, vegetarian? Are you vegan? Are you, okay. So I eat those things too. I eat, you know, azuki beans and mung beans and I was vegetarian for seven years. So you're, you're singing to the choir. I totally understand. What I, the difference is when we're doing the reset, we wanna have that metabolic flexibility, right? Okay. We wanna we want to turn on, we wanna activate the longevity genes. We want, it's, it's like a detox, right? So um, the carbohydrates that I put on the program, are the, they're the lower carbohydrate content, meaning they're carbohydrates, they're yes. just not high level, right? And they're also the highest in the phytochemicals, which you probably know. So the color, the dark colors, the purples, the reds, the dark, right. And they're also a lot of those phytochemicals that will activate the, the sirtuin genes that will allow you to do that. So. Um, and then when we get towards the end of the program, you would obviously be someone where we would get into, okay, so reincorporating those things back in. Because I just want everyone to understand just, just from um, an essential need perspective, I'm all for whole grains. I love whole grains. I love legumes and beans as well. But I just want everyone to understand that if you didn't ever eat them again, you would still get, if you ate well, all of the nutrients that you need because the fruits and vegetables and the nuts and seeds would give you those things that you would get from them, right? So um, they would just have a lower um, glucose content. They would be less heavy. So it helps people who are um, not only trying to lose weight, but some people have issues with their gut biome, right? They don't digest heavier things well, or sometimes I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with um, food combining. Mm -hmm. Right. Someone, a couple of nods. So as we get older, we make, we just naturally make less digestive enzymes in our stomach. And when you mix protein and carbohydrates, not vegetables and fruits, but when you mix complex carbohydrates with protein and fats, 
you're now needing lipase for the fat, you're needing protease for the, for the protein, right? You're needing amylase for the sugars. And so it's much more complicated for your body to digest it. And so um, that can, that gives you that relief as well. It just gives your body that break. But just to give you an example, and again, I love fruit. I'm not telling anyone to ever not eat fruit again. I just want you to understand that you could eat vegetables, like a bowl of broccoli has the same amount of vitamin C as an orange does. So I just don't want anyone to think that they're going to be lacking something for six weeks because you're not. Because I specifically went through the categories, the macronutrients, and I specifically picked sort of, you know, the healthier nutrient dense, right? It's not about eating more or having more calories. It's about eating foods that are nutrient dense, right? And it's about absorbing because it's not what we eat. It's what we absorb. So we can eat some amazing quinoa with some amazing protein and some good fat, but if we're not digesting as well as we'd like, meaning we get gas, bloating, burping, um, all of those things, heartburn, those might be normal, but they may be common, but they're not normal. Meaning it's not, it's a sign that you're not digesting well, which means you're not absorbing well, which means you're not getting the nutrients from the good food that you're eating. So this is also another way to, it gives your, your, your tummy a little bit of a break. It gives your digestion just a little bit of a break because it's easier to break it down because essentially it's following some food combining principles as well. I want to clarify something about, you know, Leanne, you mentioned about the metabolic flexibility. What we mean by that is our body, you know, through our life, because the carbs are everywhere in one shape, form or another, it's kind of forgot how to access store body fat. So the metabolic flexibility, what we're attempting to do in the first week or so is to activate that pathway that will preferentially the body will start using fat for energy and go away from the sugar. So it takes, you know, two, three days kind of to get rid of the glycogen storage from the liver. That's why the starchy, carby content, sugary content has to be at the bare minimum, right? Um, and then once we deplete the uh, storage of glycogen in the liver, then the body starts accessing fat for energy. You know, in, in the first week, mostly will be fat you're getting from food just to, you know, strengthen that um, pathway, metabolic pathway for accessing fat for energy. Uh, and after you get adapted, what's called fat adapted by the end of one week or so, give or take, then we're going to start reducing the fat intake a little bit and increase the protein because by that time, your body will know how to access fat. If you play with quinoa and those potatoes, sweet potatoes and things, what's happening, you're not really eating probably enough carbs to give your brain, your heart all that energy and you kind of re replenishing the carbs in the, in the liver a little bit and you end up not here and not there. You're not very effective in terms of accessing your store body fat, right? And at the same time, you don't have enough, you know, glycogen in your system to fuel you properly. So you kind of have foggy brain and kind of end up in, in, in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of, um, you know, we're taking an airplane and flying to Hawaii to paradise and you land in the island of somewhere in the middle of nowhere, right? So that's how you're going to feel. So it's very, very important. And we're going to guide you guys through this process in the first week, what to do and what not to do to strengthen that metabolic pathway to using fat for energy. And then once we, and, and that will be mostly in form of, you know, dietary fat. Uh, and after we kind of feel the fat adapted, then we're gonna start giving the body, okay, now let's start accessing your stored body fat. And what it does, and I know for myself, because I've been playing with this kind of diet for many, many years, uh, I can go very quickly from, being you know fat burner to being carb burner within like a day or two like you really the more you do it the, the more you become so-called metabolically flexible accessing either fat or carbs for energy right now most of us who are fairly new to it pretty much you know uh, sugar burners our body kind of forgot how to access fat so that's why these restrictions because you know we, we want your body to access store body fat uh, otherwise, it's kind of hard to do. So some questions, some hands are up. I'll, I'll wait. I think you were first, Maeda. 
Yes, thank you, Howard. Um, yeah, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ayada Orme, and um, um, I do uh, have a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I've gained weight, obviously, over COVID, uh, 30 pounds, and I'm also going through perimenopause. So that's not mm. helping at all. Um, I've tried to reset my system several times. So I've done intermittent fasting uh, with carnivore only. Like that's all I was eating, I was eating protein. No, no salads, that didn't help. I included salads, that didn't help. Um, I fasted more than 24 hours at a time, that didn't help. And what, what would usually happen is I would start, uh, a week or two go by, I get on the scale, and I'm still the same weight. And after two two weeks, I get really frustrated. And I say, fuck it all. And I start eating again. Then I do the same thing again a month later. And it just never, it just never took. Um, I don't know if I've developed like some um, microbiome, like, like my gut maybe got ruined from all the sugar I ate over COVID, or maybe I developed candida. I'm not sure. Um, but that's, that's kind of always been my struggle that is no matter what I did, I can't reset. So, yep. So yeah. it's, a very, it's a very common, um, it's a very common thing where people will, will have tried intermittent fasting, will have tried keto. Um, and with perimenopause and the hormones, it, it all ties in. And, and so I was talking about digestion in the gut. It's, it's, you know, we're a whole being, right? So there's a lot of things going on. And that's why when you do the forms, they're about eight pages and you do the, the symptom, the three pages of the, the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, I'm getting a full picture of your hormones. I'm seeing what systems are kind of out of whack and helping reset them. And then, then I send you specific things for you personally, because it's not a one glove fits all, right? We're all completely different. And so the list of proteins, the list of fats, the list of carbohydrates, you're not all going to eat the same food. You're going to pick from the, the group. You're going to pick from those lists based on feedback from me, personal preference, right? What you're used to and sort of, and you're going to message me and say, well, I'm not getting enough protein. How do I add this? And what should I, and that's why I'm there every day. So you can message me and we can tweak it. It's, it's, it's really hard when we try to take all the variables on our own. We don't have sort of something. And that's why the program is set up a specific way for six weeks. And like Andre was saying, you know, first we're getting you fat adapted, then we're not gonna hit, like, you don't wanna just go into an intermittent fast out of nowhere or just go into a fast or just go into full fat. It's, we wanna do it as a process. And also, you know, without getting personal, I'd wanna look at specifically you know, the perimenopause, the symptoms, sort of, there's a whole background there. I can help with that as well. People don't often understand that hormones, whether it's male or female, play a huge role in weight loss, a huge role, especially after middle age, right? It's not just women, it's men as well. And, you know, people, we want our cholesterol to be healthy, but our cholesterol actually makes all of our sex hormones as well. But our adrenals make the corta cortisol, which is also a hormone, right? And so if we have a lot of stress in our life, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, it doesn't matter. The body doesn't differentiate. Then you can be using up your hormones for that. And it creates imbalances in other places. So the forms, they might be a little bit annoying because they're pretty thorough, but they're that way for a reason. So I can actually get a really good idea of what's going on. And then I might ask you a few more questions to clarify, and then we kind of go from there. And okay, I'm glad to, sorry, go ahead. I, I, might add, I might add that in this time, we had about what, 15 people last time was, I don't know, like 20, 25. Um, it worked for everybody. And we had good, you know, variety of ages, demographics, genders. Um, I don't remember one person that he tried and it didn't work. So somehow it magically works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds... You know, we're sitting here telling you, you won't be hungry. You'll have all this energy, all these great things. And you're thinking, yeah, sure. But it, it really has. I mean, it's not, this isn't the first go round. And I I wouldn't be here if I didn't sort of believe in the program, right? And have sort of put my my own little part into um, tweaking my part of it. So yeah, I can assure you there. 
Thank you. Um, I'm glad to hear that it's not just a one one thing fits all because it's of absolutely not. No, I don't. And and you know what, guys, like just to clarify, like the difference between sort of a nutritionist, a holistic nutritionist and a dietitian is and nothing against dietitians. I have a really good friend who's a dietitian, but traditionally trained, like, you know, as a holistic nutritionist, you take chemistry and biology as well. But really, you know, you're focusing from the whole person and individuality, but you're focusing on quality, not quantity as your main goal, right? So we took specific courses just on microbiome, just on inflammation, just on, um, you know, different sort of like metabolic syndrome. Like there were specific things like that where we were looking at it at a very different angle. So of course, obviously I get into the numbers because they count, but that's not my main sort of, when I'm working with someone, I'm looking at the whole picture because you can't really, you can help, but you're not going to do the best that you can if you're not viewing it from, from that vintage point, right? So. Thank you. Howard, your hand is up. What's yep. going on? Hi. <laughs> Now it's now I'm going to lower it. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for all the explanations. Um, so yes, I concur with uh, what Mai just said in terms of the sugars, the what, what candida, that stuff. Probably, I'm probably a candidate for the same. But yeah. um, um, I have two or three very short questions. Number one, I'm not great at making recipes that aren't like complex recipes. So that's my fear is that I'm going to be handed recipes that. I'm good in the kitchen, but only my way. So if I have really complicated recipes, that's going to be problematic for me. So it'll depend. I'll have to look at what, what you're actually asking us to do for, for me. So that's one thing. So uh, if, if you'd like to tell me a little bit about it, or yes, I can so, wait and look at them. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I don't ask you to cook anything. Um, I give you a list of proteins that you can eat, a list of good fats, and a list of... Um, the low carbohydrate, high phytochemical foods, and you pick, you can, there are some recipes that are, you know, more elaborate. There's some very simple ones. You okay. can make it as simple, as complex as you'd like. Okay. As long as I mean, you're we'll eating the list. It's not a one size fits all at all. Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm also, I'm kind of on a program already. I started because Andre kicks my butt. So I might as well, I started early. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I'm just experimenting. <laughs> but um, so secondly, um, uh, I'll come back to that. The, I'm going to go away. I'm going to be overseas. I'm going to the Middle East, Israel, in the last week of our program. I have no proper facilities. I have, it'll be crazy. I'll be traveling around. And um, I'm not sure how I'm going to transition when I won't have proper facilities. So that'll be curious. You will. I've been to Israel. I did a full tour of the entire country and I love mm -hmm. living there. So, um, no, I've been before. It's just that I won't have proper kitchen facilities and all that. Right. Are so, you staying at a, an Airbnb or a hotel? Uh, kind of uh, among other places. Yes. Yeah. But I won't have huge kitchen facilities. So I guess we'll talk about that privately. Yeah. You and I would there. have to just sort of go over, okay, you know, these are the snacks, the go-to things you're going to take with you or pick up. And, and I would give you ideas about, you know, when you're traveling or I'm assuming you're going to be eating in restaurants, although Israel, like we would go, we actually went to um, a couple of local little markets a few times and picked up stuff. Yeah. I'd be mm -hmm. staying in a market for a while. Yeah. Okay. That, and then finally um, the issue of um, I have uh, to do a stress test and certain medical things this month, just reg stuff that took me months to get appointments. So suddenly that day, if I'm fasting, could be problematic. So what's the leeway when we have number one, something like uh, 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 blood tests or things like that. Number two, I have a birthday party and a, something I'm an event that I'm running. When could, what about the exception? Are there room for exceptions and what can they look like? That's all I know. That's not desirable, but I'm just curious well, what the room yeah. is. So when you say exceptions, I'm not sure. Do I want you eating birthday cake? No. no. I'll let Andre I can handle not eating. Okay, Howard, <laughs> I will make your life very simple. For five weeks, week six, do whatever I want when you travel. Five weeks, one rule. There is no negotiation, right? We did this rule last time and we had a participant, Megan, and she loved it and it solved all her problems. 
if we're asking them to avoid certain foods and not, just don't do it, that's it. Let's make the decision. Most of the changes is going to happen in the first five weeks. Week six, you're already going to pretty much get where you want to be, right? So yeah, it's yeah, not that yeah. week six is not that important anyway. But that and just just do it. If you like the program, if you want to get results, if you just make the decision, for me, it works. If I allow myself a little bit of exceptions, then it's an inner fight, you know, oh, I have a little bit by there. And then like I'm thinking about it more and then it just it's really, really hard. What works for me and I and I think last time um, we talked about it in the beginning and one client, she said, I just listened to you and I didn't negotiate with myself. And she had one of the best results in, in the whole program. And before that, she, right. she said she couldn't, she tried all the possible diets, couldn't lose weight at all. And it worked. So simple rule, no exceptions. Figure it out. Well, no. just, to, just to answer your other question, Howard, um, you're asking about when you would have tests and stuff? Stress tests, blood tests, and things like that, yeah. So when, you, when you're when you saying the stress test, you're talking about the run on the treadmill thing? Yeah. Okay, so there's, again, there's no set day where you have to do the fasting. That won't be an issue. You just don't do it on that day. You get to pick when. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be scared of the fasting anyway, because it's, like I said, it's, you're only really missing one meal. Yeah, I fast one day a year anyway. There you go. So you know, exactly, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, we've been doing it for thousands of years, and we've also tried, right? <laughs> It's not going to, but the thing is, is I'm telling you when you get into it and by week, like f four and five, you're, I had people saying, can I do another day? Can I, do, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about fasting. I just w wondered if it affects blood tests and things like that. So I have um, to. Well, you'll be pleasantly surprised, right? So if you just think about, um, you know, higher glucose or higher blood sugar, higher cholesterol, um, triglycerides. All my issues. I have all those. Right. Issues. And those will all go down if you're doing it properly because they have to, right? Because they go up in response to more calories than your body can use and more start, you know, more glucose than your body can use. So it says, okay, well, I'm going to put some in my liver. I'm going to put some in my muscle. What, what, what do I do when I run out of space there? Okay. Well, okay. So now I'm going to convert it into fat and put it in a fat and a cell. Okay, well, I ran out of space. Where else can I? What else can I do? And then the body says, "Okay, I'm going to start making more fat. I'm going to start making more cholesterol. I'm going to start making more triglyceride. It's got to do something with all these things, right? So when you do this and you make these changes, those levels automatically go down, and then your bloods, your insulin, you're not going to be insulin resistant because you're not going to have all this sugar in your blood that your body's trying to figure out what to do with, right? And so automatically you're going to have less inflammation and feel better. It's just, it's, it's, an, it's an inevitable thing because it's a process. It's like a domino effect. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, HJB. Put up my hand. I see Mitch on my screen. It's had to stand up way longer. <laughs> yeah. How are you? HJB, go for it and I'll go after. <laughs> okay, um, so here's my uh, true confession. What about alcohol? Um, we don't really want you drinking, but on a side note, certain alcohols really don't have a very high sugar content in the right amount. So that's something we can talk about towards the end of the program. Yeah. But we want to put in the document a list of allowable. Part of me choices. In the document, we will include the list of allowable choices. Just to give you, an, and again, I'm not encouraging anyone. I assume wine <laughs> isn't uh, permitted, but like gin, it might be okay. Yes. Just <laughs> okay. Thanks. For, for example, in the last group we did, there was there was one particular client who, I think it was week five, she said, "That's it. It's so and so's birthday. I'm going to have one drink." And I said, "Okay, well, you know." So she did, and that was fine. But I, you know, I don't want you guys starting the program sort of going, okay, well, can I do this, this, and this then? Can I tweak that and that and that? Because you, you know, it's you don't negotiate with yourself, right? You make a decision, it's a short term, you're doing it for you. That's the key. This is for you, right? So that's so to answer your question, do I want you drinking alcohol? Not particularly, right? For various reasons, because I want you detoxing and all those other wonderful things. You're not just doing it to lose weight or to, right? There's a whole other cascade of benefits you're going to get from it. 
But if week five, you, you have enough discipline to say, I'm going to go have one martini with dinner one day a week to treat myself. Well, that's a choice that you'll have to make at that time, right? Or a glass of wine or whatever it might be. Yeah. Does that answer your question? <laughs> You're muted again. Yes. You know, I've had, no, I'm unmuted. I, or I'm, am I unmuted? Yeah. No, it's funny. I'm on Zoom every day. And I think that's the first time I've raised my hand. I didn't even know how to raise it. <laughs> And of course, it's on that kind of question. So I'll have to That's reflect okay. on that when I hang up. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a fair question. Um, Linda? Yes. Um, how does fruits and berries fit into the scheme of things? When are they allowable? Are they not allowable? At least in the first six weeks, are they allowable? Like I'm thinking blueberries, strawberries. Yeah, they're wonderful. Um, and you can reward yeah, you know. they are yeah and you you can reward yourself with them you know at the end of the program <laughs> yeah, at the end, yeah, no, yeah. But, go ahead but some berries are okay like if you have a handful of blueberries they're fairly low in uh, carbs and sugar and you throw mm -hmm. it in your greek yogurt that's fine it's yeah. it's it's within the parameters yeah it's just you know what i just we don't want you to like sort of go out and have like a bowl of berries and like it, it's just we want you to to become fat adapted so a little bit, and it depends on everybody's, you know, individual discipline and ability to do that. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. One of my, for example, go to Howard. I, I'm kind of like you. I think oh, he's still there. I don't have time. You know, as some of you know me, I work. Wait, Andre, I, you're like me? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I so busy and I, I'm just lazy and I don't have time to cook in advance. So what I do, I just bring with uh, me like uh, maybe cottage cheese or Greek yogurt and I throw some, you know, blueberries or even raspberries or blackberries in it, mix it and, you know, maybe some nuts and that's a meal, you know, no, no, no cooking required. Right. So I use it all the time. Yeah. Like Howard, Greek, raspberries, blackberries. And it's very simple, com combine it with cottage cheese, yogurt, or some other choice of ready okay. to cook. Yeah. And we make, you know, some fun little recipes that are really simple with like the cottage cheese and blending it with yeah. some berries or, or cocoa and a little bit of stevia or monk fruit and stuff like that. And before you know, you have 30 grams of protein, right? You yeah. throw in a couple of nuts and seeds, some chia or flax or whatever you like, and off you go. So like I said, you can make it more complicated. You can try some of the more elaborate recipes. You could, you know, just eat a handful of um, nuts to add with your, with your meal or with your snack, or you could make the protein, you know, nuts and seed um, bread recipe that I have in there, which also isn't that complicated. You put it all together and you just bake it. It's, it's quite simple. And then you can toast it and put, you know, cream cheese or butter or dip it in olive oil or do, you know, just to mix it up. But it's, it's, um, it gives you the choice. And uh, you guys will um, see, you will be sharing those recipes. Like it's, it's a very dynamic group and everybody, you know, like who participates is going to be sharing, discussing. It's, that's why we like it to do it as a group. There is that social component to it. And sharing of information and supporting each other uh you know it's you'll see <laughs> Poor Mitch. um who was next mitch or mitch did, did you still have your hand up yeah um just a couple of simple questions uh when does the program begin uh, next monday next monday and uh when will you provide the forms that's not uh soon right andre <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once we uh, we kind of still collecting uh, information, who is gonna officially do it? And yeah. towards the end of the by the weekend, you will have we'll uh, put together a package, and those who confirm participation will receive, I you know, all the Rest. forms, all these documents, everything you're gonna need for the program. Uh, did you say by this weekend? Is that what I? Uh, yeah, by the weekend we will. Yeah, we will put it all okay. together. And once I know who is doing the challenge, we're gonna send all the info out. Everybody. Okay, and, and then you need that back right away, I presume, or not necessarily? Well, for Leon, for liability insurance purposes, she needs you to sign a couple of waivers, right, for her insurance before you start the there's, program. There's one form, there's one form, um, and then, you know, the actual forms that are specific for you, specifically for you, that are, so that I can help you. Yep. If you can get them back to me, obviously, before we begin, yep. then... I, so I know you, I know, you know, you sort of, 
what your situation is and I can give you some tips and whatever before we begin and sort of throughout the process. It's, it's much better. Yeah, so just uh, need to spend a little time this weekend is what you're saying, right? Just to fill everything out and get it back. To, like, you know, if everyone sends it to me Sunday night, it's a little bit mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, how, and how long should it take to start a curiosity to complete the form? Um, you know, it's more of a checklist of each system in the body. And then there's um, and then there's just like a three page nutrient. And it's really just checking off if these symptoms apply to you. Yep. And they're, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Um, Christine, is your hand up? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just had a question about sweeteners. Yeah. Are they allowed? Not allowed? Oh, absolutely. So, um, you can use sweeteners. I encourage using um, spoonable stevia or monk fruit um, because they don't spike the glucose and they're not, they're, they're not chemically laden. So they're more natural. Um, monk fruit is from the monk fruit. And um, traditionally, you know, some people have had a hard time with stevia, just the way they used to package it. But now they have like a spoonable form that actually has um, some prebiotic in it. And you can use it the same as you would use the monk fruit or sugar. But if you had a particular sweetener that you wanted to use, you know, that's obviously no problem. The monk fruit usually comes with erythritol. Is that a problem or is it purely well, monk fruit? No, I found um, two specific sources that don't have the, um, have that in it that are more pure that I can send you. Oh, great. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. I know that was kind of an issue halfway when that article came out, like halfway through our, our last group. So I just specifically, you know, sent those to people. So they um, had those choices. Yeah. Um, does anyone, oh, Alexandra, put your hand up again. Yeah, I'm just wondering what the specific date of the end is. What would like be when, the, the Sunday of week six, right? So which, what is the date? Just see if oh, you have okay. to your calendar. Do you have a, I don't know where my, I no, I don't. Uh, oh, well, here's my weeks. phone. <laughs> so we would start Monday and then it runs for six weeks. Sorry, I don't have okay, that. So you guys don't have the specific date on hand. I'm just, yeah, seeing... well, it's six okay. weeks from next Monday. So. I have a question. Who is that? Yeah. Hey, Melanie. Hi. 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 Uh, what about coffee? Coffee's great. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> no, no cream. So basically, um, from when we start the challenge, it's going to be two meals a day, no snacks. And cream or milk is a calorie. You know, it's going back to that no negotiation with yourself for five weeks or so, you know, black coffee, right? Maybe a little bit cinnamon. Leon likes cinnamon because of this. But what you can use the, um, you know, sort of the, the bulletproof, the MTC. No. You don't want them to use that? No, no, no. Okay. They don't need to. Black coffee. <laughs> or tea. Lots of tea, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, no dairy. Uh, so Dairy. No, no, you can have dairy. You can absolutely have dairy. No. What he's saying is when you're not having your meals, so in between those meals, in between your 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 the the allocated time to, to eat, outside of that, we're fasting, right? So that's yeah. when you wouldn't want to have the milk. So if coffee. you have a coffee with the meal, put whatever you want in it. But if you have it in the morning during your fast period. So technically, you don't want to put any calories in you. Just stick with black. But if you have it with the meal, do whatever you want. Absolutely. So, Melanie, to answer your question, so depending on, and again, that's what I'm saying, it's not, everyone doesn't have to eat at the same time. You sort of pick when you're going to have your first meal and when you're going to have your, you know. So some people will eat earlier in the day and end <laughs> earlier, and some people will, right? So depending on um, that. You know, if, if you had a coffee in the morning and it was black, or you have a tea, and then when you have your first meal, you have a coffee with your, your milk or cream. Okay. And yeah. Leanne mentioned something about MCT, which is might as well uh, time to address it. So MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides, which basically the structure of these fatty acids is such that it bypasses normal digestive systems, goes to the liver, and liver makes ketones directly from it. So it's a kind of a shortcut or a cheat 
to produce more ketones and feel better. We okay with you using it maybe in the first week or two, but then you shouldn't really be using it because we want your body to make your own ketones from your own store body fat rather than getting from the external source because you're getting that negative uh, feedback loop, right? So MCT, if you, you know, somebody who knows a little bit ketogenic diet knows it's kind of popular. Uh, maybe first week or two, you know, good thing to add it to your, you know, meals and salads and coffee if you want to, but during the meals, you know, around the meals. Uh, but eventually, you know, I don't think we should be consuming too much of it because we want your body to access its own, making your own ketones from your store body fat rather than getting it from external source. Yeah, no, I was just mentioning it because they make like Bulletproof makes one that sort of it's it, it almost tastes like a like a milk creamer with like stevia. So it gives you that sort of milk kind of coffee, whatever taste. That's all. But. Yeah. Okay. More hands. Claudia. Oh, my dog doesn't bark while I'm on, but um, it's okay. <laughs> He's been loud. Um, how does all the measuring happen? Like, <laughs> I got rid of my scale in a bit of frustration. Um, and I, I just don't, like, I'm just curious about how we track our results throughout this process. Yeah, well, Andre, um, some people, yeah, I'll let Andre answer. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer. So basically, we're not, uh, because we want to do this challenge for you guys. Yeah, for us, it would be great to collect data. We have amazing uh, scale at our university location that gives you your fat content, your lean muscle content, uh, your hydration, everything. It's a very elaborate kind of advanced machine device that will give you a detailed report in your body composition. So we highly encourage our people who do the challenge, do it at the base, as a base in the beginning and then in the end, if you are around. And it's free of charge. It takes about five minutes just before your workout. You come in, we quickly do the test. Let's go and continue. It only takes about five minutes to do. Um, if you away from your training university location, I don't know, that's a good question. There's really no other way to know. Like you maybe just go Canadian tire, buy a scale. It won't <laughs> tell you maybe your you know, muscle, lean muscle composition. It will give you, it won't be very accurate anyway. Uh, but you know, you, Daddy, you, you're gonna, you, will know, you will see. Like if the clothes feel going to the vet. <laughs> there you go. Take your step on the scale. Do you have it? Yeah. Well, you have the you have the scale at Nat, right? Do you have it at the other? With all yeah, we have it. No, we have the 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 big one, the the expensive one, yeah. is at the university location. But even just to do your weight and everything, I mean, you'll know by your clothes, right? It's how you feel, the way they fit. It's not even, I mean, the beauty, the, the thing that amazed me the most about the program, honestly, was that so you have people losing 12 to 15 pounds, but also gaining a certain amount of muscle at the same mm -hmm. time, right? And that's what makes it different. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. No, this program is different. You will see, you guys will see. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Mitch, did you have your hand up again? I did. I just want to catch what uh, Andre was just saying. Andre, you were saying about body composition readings at the outset. You've got some sort of machine yeah. uh, at Sterling or at another location? No, university. At university. So need to drop by university to do yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. And drop by any time? Uh, well, it, it, I cannot have a client, an abundant client, and come and see you. So we'll have to coordinate it, yeah. Okay. Maybe one of the days have a workout at university, and before the workout, one of us, whoever going to train you, going to quickly put you on the scale again. It doesn't take more than five minutes to do, and then you just go and do your workout. I'll, I'll shoot you an email. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Great. Just, Andre, are you looking at the chat? I just realized there's all these messages in the chat. <laughs> oh, yeah, there are 16 chats. <laughs> But basically, uh, before we wrap it up, if you guys, whoever is interested, uh, I know uh, Allah has a question. Uh, just, you know, send, shoot me an email or whatever. Let me, let us, let me know, Leanne, that, well, I don't have Leanne's contact, but let me know that you will do the challenge and I will add you to the list. And by the end of the week, we'll send you the whole package. Allah, before you, I have a question, tell me, 
How like I haven't seen you in like a couple months there in Florida, and she looks younger than she left. What have you been doing? Is it all sunshine? How come you look so? I look better. I huh? look much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more fat now. It's all, it's all that beautiful vitamin D you're getting in sunshine, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I want to say that <laughs> I gained quite a lot of weight because I don't behave well. Don't be <laughs> Obviously, it, it's a very, very hectic social life here. It's not only sun and 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 ocean. Uh, it's also social life. Life. Um, how uh, Lilian, Lilian? How we know that we are in ketone state? How we can measure that? Well, you'll know how you feel, and you'll stop you. If you're, well, the short answer is if you're eating from the list and mm. following the program, you will get there. It, it's just that it's a different process for everyone, meaning some people will move into it quicker than others. But that's why Andre was saying by the end of the first week, everyone, what do you think, a week, Andre? Yeah, it depends from person to person. But based on last challenge, took by the end of the week, maybe there were like one or two people were still struggling a bit, but most people felt fairly normalish, right? But then a week. So it takes about a week to two weeks to get fully fat, fat adapted. Yeah. And so what would happen is you would say, oh, I'm feeling this or I'm feeling that. And then I would say, okay, well then add a little more fat or add a little more of this. And we would get you to that place. So yeah. that's yeah. one of the other reasons you're on the app with me and you have, you and I have that direct you know, there, there are some quick, this actually can do, you can go to uh, any pharmacy and buy those ketone sticks that you basically yeah, put in your urine. There is the blood one. You know, I've I've exper experimented with all of them and then by the end of the day, you just go about how you feel. Uh, every time I felt great, I, I poke, poke my blood to see ketones, they're high. Every, every, every time I feel, you know, sluggish, I put and they low. So like then you just trust how you feel and then go about how you feel. So we're not, we're not counting calories. So really what I want everyone to sort of say is when you're looking at your meal, where's my protein, where's my fiber and where's my good fat, right? And so you're not going to want three plates of it because you're gonna be satiated, but you're gonna eat enough. We're gonna make sure you're getting enough to get you into the fat adoption. As someone with an eating disorder, I'm very grateful that we're not counting anything and that I don't have to weigh myself every day because that is freaking me out. So yeah, you know, Claudia, it's um it's if we give the body what it needs, it'll do what it's supposed to what it needs to do usually, right? Unless, you know, there's something underlying going on that needs to be addressed, like a toxin or something else that's going on in the environment. So yeah, and, and, and ultimately, this is you doing it, you know, for you, we don't, as I said, we're not really saying, oh, let's do all these measurements because, you know, but um, it has to be sustainable. And, you know, more, uh, so many clients that did the challenge last time, they can't, they're, they're still on it in some form, because it's, you know, it's fairly sustainable. It's a healthy way to eat, you know, two meals a day, high protein, high vegetables, and maybe some, you know, healthy carbs, nothing wrong with that. And you can eat it for life if you want to for the rest and maintain good health and decent body composition and everything else. I mean, you know, the, 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 the main takeaway I want you guys to have is that like, we know for a fact that if people, they call it calorie restriction, but we don't want to be calorie restricting because that's not fun, right? Eating, that's <sighs> eating 75% of, you know, what we feel like eating. But when you're intermittent fasting, even just doing that, you know, when they do the studies, such Dr. Sachin Panda and David Sinclair and them, and all the studies, even from the 50s and 60s, if you do the intermittent fasting, they live longer, like substantially longer, right? So regardless of everything else that we're talking about, it's, it's good for you. And it's not hard to do. You don't have to do like this, you know, I'm talking about going forward through life. You don't have to do this you know, really restrictive six hour or even eight hour, you can do a 10 hour, you can do 12 hours. It's, 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 it's allowing that process. We're fasting when we're sleeping anyway, and then just extending the window a little bit. And whether you're having two meals or three meals, just have it in that time frame. 
even just doing that and doing nothing else is huge. So um, but the, the program com combines a bunch of other things as well. So, but just that alone after the six weeks um, is amazing. And that's, and that's when we're talking about health and longevity, right? That's what we mean. Do you have another question, Claudia? Yeah, I mean, I think you'll end. I mean, I'm sure it'll be answered. It's just I, my particular go-to is when I'm low in energy, which I'm in a real, you know, I've been eating a lot of sugar, a lot for way too long now. So I'm just wondering, since that's my go-to and that's what's really messing up my health the most, um, when we start this, I'm imagining it's going to be a little rough for a few days. Um, because I noticed that it's a little rough even for a few hours when I haven't had sugar. So are there any tips like drink a lot of water? <laughs> oh, okay, so actually on that, sorry, just side note, guys. So before I forget, I'll, I'm going to answer you, Claudia. I just, you just reminded me of something. So one thing I don't want anyone to do, not just on the program, just in general, is don't drink with your meals. Okay, so I don't want you to choke. You can sip water or whatever, but I don't want you like drinking a glass and then having another drink and having, it doesn't help, it makes it worse, right? So it, it actually dilutes your digestive enzymes and it's counterintuitive. It makes it much more difficult for you to break down your food. Okay, so just little things like, just little things like that. So when we talk about candida or we have digestive issues or, you know, little things like that will help. And the other thing that I didn't even get into was, you know, I also incorporate the fermented foods um, and the microbiome foods, right? That help restore, you know, your digestion, help you with absorption. Or some of you, like I might look at your forms and say, okay, you know what? I can clearly see there's a little bit of this and that. So I'd like you to take a digestive enzyme just for a couple of weeks to get your butt. Because the digestive enzymes, all they are is they're helping your body break down the food that you're not doing a great job of doing right now, probably because of the way you've been eating. And even just doing that helps people get the system going and helps them lose weight and helps them feel better. Because when you're not digesting, you get tired. You're not supposed to have a meal and then feel tired after, right? So, sorry, I kind of sidetracked Claudia, but you just reminded me of, I needed to mention that. <laughs> um, so when you're eating, sugar and you're not eating enough protein or fat. So sugar um, will spike your insulin the fastest, right? And then protein will not so much, but then fats even less, the least. So when I say to you, where's your protein, where's your good fat, where's your fiber? What I'm saying to you is even if you have, let's say after the program, you're going to have your sugars, you're going to have your starchy carbs, you're going to have your fruits, you're going to have your quinoa, right? That's fine. But I want to see the fiber and the protein in the meal because that's what's keeping you stable. That's what's that's slowing down that quick curve and then your crash. So what you're doing, Claudia, is you're, you're crashing, so you're eating, then you're crashing, so you're eating. I mean, it's exhausting, right? And it's also, you know, one of the worst things for your health, right? So it's not even about weight. It's about you know, cardiovascular, all those other things that it ties into. So that's why the forms are important. And then, you know, I can give you some tips on that, but you just got to get through the first, the first couple of days, because once you stabilize your blood sugar, you're not going to be doing that. You're not going to be crashing every five minutes. I think I'll just be using the um, chat for a little while. Can I, yeah. first few days. <laughs> can I add as okay. well to this, uh, Claudia? Um, essentially what we're trying to do it. The first few days will be critical. And because we both have quite a bit of experience with it, we will, you know, do the chat and group chat, we will be pushing what to do, what not to do. One thing, what you basically, what you're trying to do, you're trying to deplete the liver glycogen as fast as possible. Generally, it takes about a couple of days, but high intensity training plays a big role in it because there is a thing is called glycogen amplification cascade effect meaning the more adrenaline you release during the exercise exponentially more glycogen will be depleted from the muscle like one molecule depletes thousands another of those thousands so on and so forth so like our kind of workout doing full body to muscle exhaustion will very fast 
deplete you out of glycogen, in, including your liver glycogen, right? Because now liver, liver has to release its storage to the blood to replenish, to put it back into the muscle. So, you know, you can do like net kind of training one day, go do some maybe interval runs another day, like go like be active, like, you know, high intensity is the key. The more intensely you exercise, the faster you're going to get rid of the glycogen. And at the same time, we're going to first week, maybe keep protein at moderate amount, but we're going to really spike your fats, healthy fats, like extra virgin olive oil, you know, avocados, like good fats. And we're going to push fats. And if you do it right, within week, you're going to be a different person. That's what I said earlier. You know, you guys are going to be different people by the end of week one, like meet week week two. Like you will feel different. You will be different. You won't have the same cravings anymore. Your metabolism is going to run on a completely different source of energy. You're going to feel different, mental clarity, all those things. You'll be amazed how fast if you do it right. You have to do it right. That's why we say do not negotiate. Just listen to our uh, kind of, um, you know, suggestions uh, because they're all there for a reason. Yeah, I mean, and you just, feel the more you listen to it, the, the, the greater you feel, the faster you're going to feel. If you start also, negotiating, have, oh, I'm going to have half an apple. What's the big deal? A half a cookie. You just replenish that glycogen in your liver, just slowing down the whole adaptation process. So, no, I mean, I think, I think Andre was so Claudia with something with a situation like that. And I'm assuming that you're going to, you're craving sweets, you crave sugar, you crave, right. I know this. So, there's recipes there where I've got like chocolate chips that are sweetened with stevia. And then you can make some of my high protein, like muffins with like the stevia chocolate chips in there. That's going to give you that sweet taste that you want, but it's going to support your blood sugar and keep that balance where you can have like the chocolate, the shakes that have it, or some of the like little sweet, you're going to use the monk fruit and the stevia. You're going to go from that. You can still get that taste until you're, you know, right. When you have those cravings, that's going to be your go-to. Okay. 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 If there are no more questions, anyone? Don't see any more hands. No. All right. Well, we're looking forward to you guys join. Okay. Howard, do you want to say something? You're just saying hello. He's saying bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I will see most of you in person or virtually anyway. And, uh, you know, hopefully we will, you will decide to do this challenge. You will see how good it is. And, uh, you'll be, you know, you, I don't want to sound like I'm selling anything, but it is a very, very good challenge. And if not, well, hopefully you learn something, you know, new and we'll see you another time. Yeah. It was Thank nice you. to meet everyone. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.